Well, good afternoon. This is Dean Tenney. I'm coming to you from my studio here in uh, fabulous Las Vegas. Uh, we've been doing something a little different on the channel. We've been doing uh, what I'm calling uh, carve outs of some of the narrative lectures. So uh, this is from uh, lecture four, advanced option strategies. And the carve out is just on straddles. So what we're trying to do is uh, make some of the strategies a little more bite size in terms of these carve outs. So this is a uh, score four more on series seven. And it's the four questions you're held accountable for, uh, four questions on straddles you're held accountable for on this series seven. So again, a carve out, I'll put a link into the advanced option strategy lecture, which is like an hour and 45 minutes. I'm trying to keep these, you know, 15 minutes or so, a little more uh, bite size, if you will. All right, so here are the four things that you have to be able to do uh, on a straddle. So here's the score for straddle menu. We first have to be able to identify a straddle on the test. We're straddling the strike price line. And so it's when you're long, two different type of contracts. So we have two types of contracts, calls and puts. So we have a long straddle. That's when you're long a call and long a put. Or we have a short straddle. And that's when you're short a call and short a put. So we have two different types of straddles. We're straddling the strike price line. A straddle with different strike prices is called a combination. The second thing we have to do in terms of scoring four more is to calculate the break-evens. This is the only option strategy where you have two break-evens. And if you only remember one thing about options, a great thing to remember is call up, put down. So the break-evens are going to be strike price plus total premiums, strike price minus total premiums. The third thing we got to be able to do in terms of our score four more uh, on the straddle is to be able to determine where it's profitable. We have a great memory aid mnemonic device for that, and it's called silo. That's short inside. If we're short the straddle, we want the market price of the stock to be in between the two numbers, the two break-evens. If we're long the straddle, long outside, we want the market price of the stock to be outside of those two break-evens. And then the last thing in our score four more is we know, you know, when do we use a straddle? You know, when we buy a call, all the speculative strategies, by the way, we're either buying volatility or selling volatility. So when we buy a long call, for example, we're buying upward volatility. And we got to be right, right about three things, direction, up, how far, and timing. Very hard to do. And when we buy a put, we're buying downward volatility. You know, we got to be right about three things, direction, down, how far, our premium, cover out of pocket cost, and timing. Or we're selling volatility. So in a short call, we're selling that volatility. So yeah, I think you're gonna be wrong on something there, so I'll take your money. So we're either buying or selling volatility as it relates to speculative strategies. And same thing when we short the put, right? We're selling that volatility. So we're either a buyer volatility or a seller volatility. And in a straddle, no difference here. We're buying volatility, it's just non-directional volatility. So now I'm gonna buy a call and buy a put, or I'm gonna sell a call and sell a put. So. That's kind of what's going on. All right, let's apply the score for more straddle menu to get our points. So as you can see here, uh, the first thing we have to be able to do is identify the straddle. Let's look in the top left here and look at this. This is a long one apple, June 175 call at five and long one apple, June 175. Oh, look at that. Dean already has discovered a problem with the slide. And that's why definition is so important, right? There we go. Fixed. Let's see. It looks like the other one's okay. Okay. Slide show. Current slide. We're back in business. So here I have a choice to uh, buy the stock at 175. That's what that means. If you're struggling with that, uh, you may need to go back and review uh, those strategies. So I paid uh, five points here to have a choice to buy the stock. And let's put that in red to represent money out versus money in. And I paid uh, four points to have a choice to sell. So ultimately, I'm out nine points. So you know, if I really wanted to teach you about options, I'd make you buy one. Once you're out of pocket, you figure out pretty quickly how this uh, game works. As I mentioned, we're going to have two break-evens here. We're going to have two break-evens. We're going to have what's called our upside break-even. And we're going to have what's called our downside break even. And so let's just put that in there. All 
And remember, the straddle is the only one on your exam where you actually have two uh, break evens. So then we got an upside break even, and we have a downside break even. So we've identified it as a long straddle. We said the next thing we got to be able to do is determine the break evens. And the way we're going to do that is we're going to total the premiums added to the call. So we're going to take, well, let me get our hang out here. We're going to get strike price plus total premium. So in this case, it's going to be 175 plus nine. And that's going to equal our break even of uh, 184. Let's put that here. So as we said, we're gonna have uh, two break evens and then we're gonna take our strike price minus total premium. which equals our downside break even. Looks like I got a VE there instead of a BE, but I'll leave it to you to fix that. 175 minus uh, nine equals, uh, I'm terrible with arithmetic, so I'm gonna grab my calculator. I'm not being facetious. There's no sense giving up something because you can't do arithmetic. Uh, I get 166 is our downside break even. And let's put that in here. So we're looking at our first uh, long straddle up there in the top left, and we've identified it as a long straddle. We've calculated our break evens. The next thing we got to do is determine where it's profitable. And we have a great mnemonic for that. We have a great mnemonic for that. And the mnemonic we have for that is short inside. long outside. Silo. So in terms of our uh, what's going on here, you know, as I mentioned, if I really wanted to teach you options, I'd make you uh, buy one. And once you were out of pocket, you'd figure out pretty quickly how this game works. But what we're saying here, let me just get my arrow here. is that we're going to need the uh, apple in this case, or long the straddle to be outside of these two numbers. We want it to be outside of that if we're long. And that would mean the uh, flip side of that would be that anything in between these two numbers, we're going to be a loser. By the way, I've added to the slide strike price plus, as you can see here, I've added that uh, there to the slide, those two break evens. <laughs> Uh, boom. Let me get our And then our last uh, question, our score four more in our score four menu is when do we use a straddle? So we buy a straddle when we're expecting volatility, but the direction is uncertain. So here, I think Apple is either gonna be above 184 or below 166. So I'm not sure if they're gonna have a blowout uh, holiday season or not, or a blowout first quarter or second quarter or not. But I think if they do, it's gonna go up or it's gonna go down. I have a practice problem based on this. So we have two versions of a straddle. We have long straddles and we have short straddles. We have two versions of straddles. And so we said there's four test questions about a straddle. And we said, the first thing you gotta be able to do is identify the straddle. So as you see down here in the bottom right, I have a short straddle. I have an obligation to sell hundred shares of Apple at 175 and I have an obligation to buy hundred shares of Apple at 175. 
So again, the identification is long two different types of contracts or short two different type of contracts. And so let's just put that in here. Well, let's get a bigger font than that. So we uh, brought in five, we brought in four for a total of nine. And again, what we're going to do is we're going to, uh, by the way, I'm not going to put pluses signs here. I could put pluses, I guess, or minuses. Let's try that. Let's, so I'm trying to be a little ni nicer here in terms of this. So oh, the plus means, you know, making money, right? So I'm just showing that uh, here in between these two prices, I'll go all the way here. So as we said, uh, we've identified it as a straddle. We've calculated the break-evens. Please note the break-even is the same. You're going to total the premiums, add it to the calls, subtract it from the put. So we have the same break-evens here. Where is it profitable? We have a great mnemonic silo, short inside, long outside, short inside, long outside. So here it's a short straddle. And so we want Apple to be in between these two numbers. And then uh, where is it unprofitable? Where it's unprofitable is outside of these two break-evens. And uh, that's going to be a problem, right? So we got a problem here once we go outside of the break-evens. Once we go outside of the break-evens, we've got a uh, problem. So let's put our happy face in there. Boom, there's happy face. Let's put on our sad face. Now this does expose the customer to unlimited risk because on the upside, remember this thing can go outside the break-evens by an unlimited number. So that's our uh, break-even. Let's put our minus signs in here. So that's how that looks in terms of a straddle. So uh, our score more, we've identified it as a short straddle. We've calculated the break-evens. We've determined where it's profitable using silo. And then here we expect a trading range. We expect Apple to stay between 184 and 166. So that's our score four more on the straddle menu. Get to four points, uh, hopefully on your series seven, if you encounter a straddle. Uh, let's look at a potential Test uh, prep question, I'll look, clear that up. So uh, here's what we just uh, did. We identified the straddle, we calculated the break-evens, we determined where it was profitable using silo, and we had uh, determined where uh, when we use it. Those were our score four more uh, for the series seven as it relates to a straddle. And then again, as a bonus, uh, here's a test prep question, ABC Corp, is in litigation over patent infringement. Your customer believes that if ABC prevails in litigation, ABC will move much higher. And if ABC loses in litigation, ABC will move much lower. He's not sure of which outcome. What option strategy might you recommend? Well, looks like we'd recommend C, a long straddle. You know, uh, this is based on a real situation that uh, you know I did a straddle on. And uh, it was uh, ABC was suing another company and they settled out of court, both stocks forward. My put expire, coal came through big, so it ended up working. Again, I wasn't sure if they're going to win or they're going to lose. If they win, I think the stock is going up. Uh, if I lose, the stock is going down. By the way, I'm a loser, right, if it uh, is at the strike price. I'm going to lose my premium. Let's just go back. The max loss anytime you buy an option is the premium, which is nine points. And the max gain is always what you collect, nine points. But anyways, when do you use a straddle? We talked about that. And there's our prep question. And that's how you get four, score four more on uh, straddles. So doing pretty good. I'm keeping these carve outs at uh, 15 minutes. And I came in right at 15 minutes. Like, subscribe, share, and uh, we'll do some more uh, later on. Let me give you our customary sign off.
görürüz.